Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Tony with La Lita Loca, and this is my mega, mega, mega ship tour of the NCL Prima. I am here in the cabin. This is a wonderful cabin. The cabin number is 16188. This is a regular balcony. And I don't know the square footage, but look at all of the room between all of the stuff, especially the bed. Now, the special feature of this cabin is not this freaky artwork. It is its proximity to the dry slide that starts, I believe, on deck 18. Uh, it is loud in this cabin during the day when they're running the drop slide. I doubt this microphone will pick it up, but uh, one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> looking at the ocean, but let me show you this. We've been playing a little game the whole cruise called Will They Get Stuck? And of course, check out these. This is one of the most fluffy, friendly cruises I've ever been on. Huge, huge seats on the balcony that recline, so comfortable. Here we go, let's play the game. Will they get stuck? Might take a minute. I think I heard the uh, drop slide going on right before we came outside. They run like every 40 seconds. Who's the next contestant on Will They Get Stuck? Here we go. I hear it happening. Maybe not. Here we go. Will They Get Stuck? Wow. Okay. That that one that's a little kid. But every adult that I've seen come through here did get stuck. When we come back to the cabin, we shall uh we'll play again. And let me just go ahead and insert some footage of somebody getting stuck. So we're on the port side of the ship. You can see the overhang of the bridge there. Currently today, we are making our way back to Miami. We were supposed to stop at Harvest Key, Stirrup Key, Great Stirrup Key. That's where we were supposed to stop today. But the wind prevented the tender activity from happening. And so, uh, so yeah, we got ourselves a sea day. So you're gonna see the ship uh, full of sea day activity. This bed is, you know, a steel bed, very comfortable. Doesn't have any bed skirt, so you can see the luggage. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the cabin other than to say it's a really nice size. Couple closets, all of our stuff is in it. And then uh, another great feature for the larger cruiser is this very big bathroom. I cannot overstate how comfortable and big this bathroom and shower is just for a normal balcony cabin. It's awesome. All right, let's go out and explore the cruise ship. So this is Norwegian Cruise Line's newest cruise ship. And one of the things that they diverge from is most other Norwegian cruise ships, they have fish on the floor. And the direction that the fish are swimming tells you where forward and aft in the ship is. On this ship, they have these triangles. So uh, if you're looking at the triangle, the point points toward the forward part of the ship. What's a triangle called where all three sides are the same length? Is that an... It's a nice isosceles triangle. I can't remember which one, where all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same, but uh, so that's forward. We're gonna go to the aft passenger elevators, which is really, they're almost kind of midship. They're almost midship because the Haven, which is the ship within a ship, they have their own elevators and those are really the aft elevators. Every elevator bank has a descriptor, this permanent sign that shows you where all of the stuff is. And uh, I do love this big mirror. This, this mirror makes you just want to get down, get down. Uh, again, ready for the modern aesthetic, you guys. I love the blues. I love the grays. It's very nautical. They do a lot of interesting light fixtures. There's a lot of great art. But what's even interesting is the stairwells. They're not very big. See, so look, this is only like barely two people wide. 
or some so oh, here's the down elevator and, and i'm missing it this is the down elevator oh yeah it's all down in florida when you do that yeah they do it down there oh my god the first time i seen that was in new york city and i seen signs 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 deck 15. I had a sign that said, yeah, you know what? I gave a black box. I did. I really did. Oh, yeah. But... 10-4, um, yeah. 10-4, 6-8 and even. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so in New York... The lift is going down. We gave it to him. Yeah. If she was around, she would have took it back from me. Deck 14. <laughs> me? Whatever you feel me? at the moment. Me, me, me. Excuse me? Oh, okay. She doesn't do it. She doesn't do it. Excuse me. Sorry. What's up? I didn't know she was trying to leave. <laughs> the lift is going down. Boom. Probably already in trouble for that one. Deck 13. That's the wrong floor. Who's staying on that one? Annual <laughs> hotels in New York City. They had 13 floor. No, 13 floor. We're, we're traveling with a woman who's done really well in the casino, like multi thousand jackpots at slots. Lift is going down. She's staying on deck 13. She attributes the, her wins to staying on the unlucky floor. So, yeah. The house doesn't even have the 13th floor. I know, it's crazy, right? Deck 11. You can go there if you want. I'm going to town. Didn't work. Damn it. Was working on it. The lift is going down. How's the lift going now? It's a lift. You gotta get in your car, you gotta press the button as soon as the lift is going forward. Be good, guys. Have a good day, everybody. The lift is going down. Deck nine. The lift is going down. Deck six. So that was a long time on the elevator. Obviously, great content, right? But it's a cruise life. I figured I'd leave it in so you could see what you're dealing with here. It's uh, the elevators have been pretty good throughout the week, but uh, when you when you stay up on 16 like we are, you have some opportunities. Opportunities to uh, get stuck trying to go down. So we are essentially midship. There's the casino through there. I really can't. I don't think I can walk through the casino with the camera. I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm going to show you the Belvedere bar. And the Belvedere bar is the bar that is kind of set here for Cagney Steakhouse and one of the main dining rooms. They've got a good amount of restrooms all over the cruise ship, not hard to find. They're on a map. But the Belvedere bar is really kind of a waiting area. This is Cagney Steakhouse. That is the famous Norwegian Cruise Line Steakhouse. I don't know if we can the doors are locked. The doors are locked. We'll just peek through the window and I'll throw a picture up of the steak I ate the other night. Beef. That's what's for dinner. Nice sitting area. Nice bar to get some libations. And then the Commodore room is one of the two main dining rooms here on the NCL Prima. Look at the carpet, guys. Look at the modern aesthetic. It's a sexy. Look how big the chairs are in all of the venues. Chairs with no arms. I'm telling you, this is probably one of the most fluffy, friendly experiences I've had at sea. Beautiful restaurant here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Chairs there. Easy to sit in if you're bigger or smaller. Chairs there. Just a, a great amount of seating. We got the casino over here. 
what I'll do is uh, I'll throw some footage of the casino in there. They've got a, it's all sm non-smoking. All of this is non-smoking. And then all the way in the back, there's an enclosed room, which uh, you can smoke in, but that's the casino there. Art. Gotta focus on the art. All right, let me shut the camera off. We're gonna go all the way down the left side of the casino. All right. What a wonderful world. I tell you what, so this ship is really different than, really different than the last version of the Norwegian ships. This is the first ship in the class. So there, yeah, the theater's still closed. I'm not gonna lie. The first in this class, and so it's got to be a challenge, I would think, for shipbuilders and cruise companies to actually go from concept to having people on board, understanding what the flow means, understanding how people will respond, and that's been a lot of the feedback that I've gotten. People that are longtime traditional Norwegian cruisers, they're like, dude, it's different. And certainly getting used to that difference is it. They do have a size problem on this ship though. There's some venues that are just too small. And I'll show you those as we go along. But yeah, you got your shopping going on. This is sneaky. So you have guest services here. And then you have this area called onboard credit. And so, I don't know what the onboard credit desk does. I wonder if it's like people that may have challenges with their bill, or if that's the sneaky way to like get you to book another cruise because you can get some onboard credit. I don't know. We'll sneak down the hallway here. Commerce, shopping. Art. Watch. Jewelry. Everything. You can even get yourself a handbag. How about that? Art. How you guys doing? Enjoying your sea day? Oh yeah. Or our fourth sea day? <laughs> Got the art gallery. I wonder if they're running European wattages here. Looks like my uh, looks like my camera's all wacky. So this is the Sid Norman Poorhouse. This is one of those areas where there has been some challenge uh, with the space. Take a quick look at that. Oh, it's Star Wars. How about that? Stay out of sight. I'll try to find them. I hope so too. So, some of the most popular shows on the ship are in this Sid Norman's. I don't know what the capacity is, but I would be surprised if it was 200 people out of the over 3,000 that are on the ship. 200 people and, you know, every night for these shows, it's standing room only. Oh, how about that? We got some appropriate art. This is the way. Now you have the improv club. I love this uh, improv here. You got all the elements for comedy, I would get. Well, you got all the elements just for life in general posted up here on the wall. So this is the improv comedy club. They have shows here periodically. How do you like that? Periodically. Again, not another, not another big space at all. You got like a bar and then this is a pretty this is it it's pretty small again i think if you could get a couple hundred people in here i'd be surprised and you got standing room only and that's really been probably the most heard complaint that i've had is that when it comes to going to these shows it's really hard to get into the shows i uh i saw a line the other night so there's the entrance to the improv where the comedy shows are here's a little schedule of the comedy shows and, you know, honestly, the line stretched from that door there 
all the way back through this bar. Art, all the way back to this bar. I'll show you how far it went. This is the Metropolitan Bar. It's the entryway for the Humidor Cigar Lounge. You're only allowed to smoke cigars in there. Nice cigar smoking lounge. But the line for the comedy went all the way to this door back here. So you got, this is a nice, they play music in here at night. This is how people get to the second main dining room. And so uh, I'll take you back a little bit. Did you see the art? Now this is sneaky. This is sneaky. There is a third set of elevators back here. And uh, even when you look how luxurious, I don't even know if I'm allowed to walk in the elevator bank for the Haven, the Haven. But they have their own elevators. You gotta have a card to get in there. Uh, so a true, the true aft elevators are for the Haven. Metropolitan bar, Haven elevators. And then as you keep going back, you got more specialty art. So this is Nema. This is the sushi restaurant. Again, beautiful, modern, aesthetic. Probably that's going to be the theme of this restaurant. Sushi and uh, sashimi. Hasuki. Hasuki is the teppanyaki, the hibachi restaurant here. A big, a big teppanyaki. I want all these blues in my life. God, look at that deep blue. And then this is the Hudson main dining room. So this is uh, probably the bigger main dining room, I think. And it's beautiful. Got all these huge windows, just beautiful tablecloths, nice clean place to eat. Got all these great light fixtures up here. This is a this is a main dining dining room dream back here. And the interesting thing that they did with the ship is they did fit for purpose, right? And so instead of building out like a lot of walls and stuff like that, a lot of the venues really kind of sit in the shape of the ship. So we're walking this half circle here to get around the ship and you can tell they've got everything in place. How's it going? Sorry. Got these nice little alcoves here. Stop whining, everybody. Just stop whining. And that's, uh, that's pretty much, pretty much deck seven. But, um, as pretty cool as deck seven is, I think deck eight may be, may take the cake. Cause it's got both an indoor space and an outdoor space. Let's make our way to deck eight. I love these like, mm, mm. Oh, feeling good today, guys. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you're at. Glad to be showing you this cruise ship also. Have you made it this far to the video? What's the coolest thing you've seen so far? Leave a comment below. Like, subscribe for more cruising content. I wanna point something out in the elevators. Hopefully we get one that's not too crowded so I don't Make anybody feel uncomfortable. All right, so let's see what we really, so we looked at six, we looked at seven, we're gonna go to eight, and then we're gonna go seven, 18, 19. Let's see what's going on. Up oh, the down button, the down button. It's true on the Prima, like every other cruise ship. Uh, two dings means down, one ding means up. Oh, here we go. This is exactly what I wanted to show you. All the elevators have this like uh, star field. How cool was that that they were showing Star Wars? The like star field. Pop out on eight. Deck eight. Now, 
Here we go. This deck draws a lot of people in. Honestly, a lot of stuff to do on this deck. So we got, we got a staple. We got an NCL staple. We got the local bar and grill, but it's at a completely different place than where you would expect it to be. And it's, it looks different. So if you look in there, it's basically a straight through kind of food eating experience. I don't want to go in there and bother anybody, but really different than what you would normally have on Norwegian where the local sits above the atrium. And then this is the Mexican restaurant, Los Lobos, especially restaurant. It was good. I'll throw in some food pictures here. We ate there the other night. I do love all of this Mexican inspired artwork here. Again, I don't know what the art budget was, but uh, it's very nice. Very nice pieces here. It's probably locked. No, just a quick peek in Los Lobos. Again, the seating's big, everything super comfortable. Now I haven't spent much time here uh, on the side of deck eight, but this is called, I think it's called the ocean walk or something like that, the ocean view. And I say this is like, a, to me, this is like a Lido 2.0. Look at it, you know, everybody's out here sunning and funning. Get people in the shade. This is where the, the dry slide terminates. So, hey, what's up guys? So if you, uh, if you make it down the slide without getting stuck, this is where it's gonna come out at. I think somebody's coming down the slide right now. There we go. They made it. And you slide down on these mats. It's like these felt mats. But even though they're felty, they still seem to get stuck in that spot up there. But this is a good hang. It's all kinds of crazy people hanging out over here, keeping it locked down on the fourth sea day. But so you got these beds that sit on water, which is kind of nice. Of course, you have these. Uh, stand-up jacuzzis some people say they're showers i don't know stand-up jacuzzis you got this infinity this infinity pool looks like everybody's enjoying it looks like you fall right off the ship but you will not and then uh yeah just people everywhere enjoying the sun we'll keep on going now i think one of the coolest innovations on this ship is the indulge food hall I've done a whole video on indulge. Uh, I'll leave that linked at the end if you haven't seen it. But here we go. Just ridiculous amounts of places to sit down and enjoy your day. Big or small, everybody's fitting on this cruise ship and I super appreciate that. Again, one of the challenges I've heard about this cruise ship is if you're somebody who likes to be out in the sun, if you like to hang out at the pool, you can do it, but you're going to do it in close proximity to other people because uh, it is, the, the rooms are tight. It's tight. Got the nice Soleil bar in the back. Good place to catch the sun. And then of course the beautiful, uh, beautiful place to see the wake of the ship. You guys having a great day? You having a good day? Yes. Okay, good. That's it's required on the last day. Required. And then we'll keep walking around here. At least you got the shade on this side over here. This is this would be where I would hang out. So many spaces. So there is, uh, there's some islands out there. I don't know if you can see them, but I feel like that's where we we're supposed to go today. But unfortunately the wind has prevented us from doing it. The indulge food hall. And then this side of deck eight mirrors that side. Except uh, fortunately this side is full of shade. You got the 
You got the beds where you can stick your feet in the water. You got the starboard side infinity pool. I think I'm on the starboard side. Yeah, starboard side infinity pool. And this is where the two, Are these dry slides also? More dry slides. I didn't realize that. Three dry slides on this ship? So you have these ships also hanging off the side of the ship. A little dry slide action. Wait a minute, Jim's coming. <laughs> Keep on exploring. Wow. So, uh, this is a spot I hadn't even experienced yet. This is outside of the photo gallery on deck eight. And it's almost like a little sculpture garden. How about that? We're so artistic over here. Honestly, when I look at this piece, I, I think a lot about eternity, the coming and going, the ebbing, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, beautiful place to sit, reflect. Got some, some greenery, some artificial turf. The zone. Looks like some sort of Gundam robot. The zone. We'll walk back inside in a second, but. Oh, I do like this piece too. Wow. How about that? It's pretty cool. The ocean. This looks like a, a puppy, a dog. When we go in here, this takes us all the way back to the front of deck eight. So let's take a walk through the inside now, the interiors. One of the things that Norwegian prides themselves on is extracting some more of your money when you're on the cruise ship. So you've got great uh, shopping opportunities. Oakley, Ray-Ban, legit high-end stuff. Plus you got Norwegian branded stuff. They also have this tech zone, which is kind of cool, where you can get chargers, batteries, really any of the stuff that you may forget at home. Good option. We've got some smart watches, headphones. You can get gold by the yard, by the inch. Got some jewelry. Got a good section dedicated to photography. You can have your portrait consultations in there. Portrait consultations. Monkey. And then that takes us right back to where we started at here on deck eight, right outside the elevators. So the outside area is called Ocean Boulevard. And uh, this is the local bar and grill. So that's different than the local food spot. Local bar and grill, it's a place to come get your drinks. And this is really the path to the indulge food hall when you're inside. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good, y'all having a good day? Yeah, oh, great day. It's uh, more alcohol than you can imagine. I don't know what they do here, whether this is just a great place to watch a game on the big screen, but a couple nice tables, some really great spots to sit down, enjoy some food. What about this? Oh yeah. Look at me, I'm in the haven again. Get in... the indulge food hall here. We won't stay here long. They're closed right now. Uh, they have lunch and dinner, but all these different stations will have food. And the real magic of this place 
is that you just sit down and you order everything on that pad and within minutes they bring the food to you. It's really, I really think it is the future of food service on cruise ships. It's pretty neat. You sit anywhere and then you start ordering. Show you the Luna bar here in the back. The Luna bar. Got a lot of beer on tap back here. And then you've got the other side. There's two Starbucks on board. This is the second. I've already heard some scuttlebutt that maybe a lesson learned is that you may not need two Starbucks. So it's gonna be interesting to see if this one goes away. But, uh, all right, I'm gonna make my way back to the beginning of that shopping area. Show you guys the rest of deck eight. And so uh, I've quickly, I'm back. I quickly cut in to the other side just so I can show you guys what it looks like. This is the backside of the local. Again, this is a pretty different than what you see on other cruise ships. Um, you know, this would normally just sit above, like sit right above the, the, the atrium. But yeah, now it's all just kind of a shotgun place to get food. So pretty interesting. All right. Back past the sunglasses. Let's explore the other half of deck eight. Really kind of feel like this is Ford. We came in through those doors a minute ago. You got more shopping over here. And then you got a Pandora shop, which is pretty unique for a cruise ship. More designer gifts more access to the outside sadly sadly there's no more ship models they were sold out even before we came on the ship so uh, i know a lot of people trying to get that ship model might be able to get it in the middle yeah how are you <laughs> that's okay yeah so no ship model but again so it's like the atrium's kind of open but the band is like right under there so unless you're in these seats here you don't get, you know, you got a nice rail for everybody to hang out and listen to what's going on in the atrium, but you can't really see anything from up here. So that's a challenge. They do have the perspective studio over there. You can get a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff done photographic wise here. Photography, another good set of seating area. This is the whiskey bar. Another good set of seats. And then they have one of those kind of like bridge over water deals. This is Onda. The other thing that's interesting with their specialty restaurants, like look at this, this is just a rectangle, right? So we're talking fit for purpose. They built their restaurant just straight. And uh, that may appeal or may not appeal, but again, they've got all this great accompanying modern aesthetic that really transforms just essentially what's a rectangle into a pretty cool place to eat dinner. The other thing that's interesting, you can get there from the outside back in the corner there, and you can get to Los Lobos through the back. Oh, we'll just walk back here. The thing that was frustrating on this cruise, so my muster station is F4. And when you look up what uh, the F, you know, F4 is, it just said that it's in Onda or Los Lobos and you don't know which one. And so there was a little confusion with the mustard drill, but uh, that's a whole nother story. It was a little more reasonable, this mustard, than my last one on NTL, but they are back to the in-person muster. You got your wine cabinet back here from Onda. And then, okay, maybe it's closed down. Maybe it's a uh, employee only. No, no, you can get there from here. So if you pop out here, there's outdoor seating for Los Lobos and Onda. And here's kind of the backside, the backside of Los Lobos. So it's very cool. I like this purple that they're using in those seats there and the purple that they're using. I don't even know that's purple, right? Some variation of pink. I don't know, just a nice, nice look. 
All right, we'll uh, pop back out the front. Oh, we can, I think we can get to the outside walking thing. The walking feature, the glass feature. I know, I'm everywhere. How's your guys' day? Awesome. Sequence, this is a great game. Hey, what's up? Good, how are you guys enjoying the uh, Force C day? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Can you wave hi to the camera? Hi. That's Shannon, everybody. All right, we're going. We're going to check out this, uh, this feature here. Yeah, we've had a really great week. This was a group cruise for us. We had about 110 people. And, uh, well, you've just seen three of them. Those fine folks walking at us and then the Shannon up on her balcony. So this is the uh, bridge of size type concept. We're hanging off the side of the ship. Are we going to be okay? I hope we make it. Will it hold me? It is kind of cool. Do you think this, uh, would that scare anybody? It doesn't really scare me. I'm not scared. You're scared. I'm not scared. You're scared. And then, uh, again, this decade really, as I said, I think it's as impressive as deck seven was. Deck eight has got space after space. You got the binocular lookout thing. Can imagine the ship like in Alaska, you know, looking out into the ocean, spotting marine mammals, and fish, and sharky sharks. I don't know if this will even, can we even do that? I don't know if we can even do that. But yeah, binoculars, nothing, nothing more fancy than that. Not sure where this goes. It's everywhere. You might be able to walk all the way around Deck 8. This may be like a full, legit promenade. How's it going? Wow. Another complaint that I've heard a little bit is there's no walking track. So it's nice to know that if you want to do some laps, of course it's a little choppy, but it looks like you can walk all the way around deck eight. It's kind of neat to see the little breaker area. Wait, get a guys at the bridge. What's up, Captain? What's up? Of course they can't see me down here, I don't think. It's very peaceful up here. There's nobody up here. And then, uh, yeah, so like back with the pool area, there's also another set of binoculars and relaxing. It's a little difficult to see, but this is a water slide. Hopefully we'll be able to see it when we get up top, but it's one of those kind of water slides that are that's open and it does kind of hang off the ship but you kind of slide up to the top of that and then slide back down pretty cool nice and peaceful out here again you know, I think it's worth noting the investment they really put in the ship because most cruise ships on these outside promenades, you're not going to have, you know, this kind of textured wall. And they also have the... Now I had heard that somebody had broken the glass or the glass was broken for some reason. There is a closure over here. So maybe that's the, maybe that's the sitch. Maybe that's the sitch. And here we are. All 
All right, let's go grab an elevator and go to some higher decks. I'll be back with you then. All right, uh, where's the action start? 17. The action starts on 17, which is as high as we can go in the walk elevator here. The lift is going up. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like this Alexa sounding UK term Damn. using the lift uh, going up, but. Do you like the voice on the elevator? I don't need to call the lift. Exactly. See, this is what we're breaking down here, everybody. I mean, we're not anti-lift, but it is weird to have it called a lift. It's not an English ship, so I don't get it. I know, right? They should be able to reprogram it for... Uh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Deck 17. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. All right. Sorry, sir. All right, we have made it 17. Let's see what's up here. This is, uh, again, another nice big piece of art. I don't, you know, it, art shouldn't make a difference or it should, I don't know. I guess that's a nice, interesting conversation. Uh, do you care about art or not? But I do believe that having these nice little pieces of art to look at, it really enhances the experience. So on 17, we're forward. We've got the Galaxy Pavilion, We've got the Observation Lounge. Galaxy Pavilion is really like a, uh, it's like a virtual arcade. It's like we're going into space. The final frontier. So yeah, this is a, uh, A lot of virtual reality stuff. You have the VR maze, dark ride, truck simulator. It's kind of like taking the arcade to the next level. Standard type video games. Golf simulator. Light speed cup. That looks really neat. Get a VR battle. No, no, no. I don't have a trigger in this side. Oh, here we go. Are you in? It's like you. It's really neat. They've used VR, VR goggles, to augment the video game experience, and so really giving you a depth of a depth of immersion that you wouldn't get with just a regular video game. And then they also have an escape room experience here too. So yeah, it's pretty neat. How's it going? Just exploring all the uh, cool stuff. Cool stuff. How about that? So, so escape room is $15 per play and top swing is $40 for 55 minutes. With the group this week, I really didn't do a ton of exploration, but I would love to come back and do the golf experience and do the, do the escape room. I am looking to see what happens when they bring out the Viva, the next one of the ships in this class, to see what kind of changes they may have put in place. So we'll make a loop around the observation deck. Observation deck is a staple on the new cruise ships from NCL. Uh, and it's exactly what you would expect. Lots of great seating, lots of great open windows so that you can enjoy your day looking out. We took the NCL Encore to Alaska last year. The observation deck, when you're just going through the inside passage or spending a day at Glacier Bay National Park, it's a great place to hang out. The other thing that's cool about the observation deck is they do have afternoon food, almost like a tea time type food where you can get sweet and savory items. You get scones and cream. Of course, there's a bar up here. Just a cool spot. And again, they've done a great job with the decor. I love the carpets here. It's 
pretty amazing. But again, this is one of those days where everybody's on the ship. And uh, as you can see, there's people everywhere. This is the observation deck bar. How's it going, guys? Yeah, it's very cool. But people galore. So if you're somebody who doesn't care for being completely inundated with people, it may be a challenge. All right. If we go outside on deck seven, we're going to enter the pool area. The Lido deck, as it were. So, we got the music uh, blaring. Hopefully, we can uh, survive this walk and talk without a copyright strike. But you've got the back pool area here. Again, just a bunch of loungers. But this is the main pool. I guess I shouldn't say back pool. This is the pool. And so it's, uh, it's tight, as you can see. This is one of the challenges, I think, for NCL. They try to do so much stuff that it, uh, they try to do so much stuff that they run out of room. I mean, you got the three level go-kart track there, but for the sunbather, for the person that likes to swim uh, and have some pool time, there's just not a lot of space. And uh, so you got the main pool, you got the pool bar, you got all the loungers, well, that's that's it, you know. So we're gonna keep on going. The Lido buffet is on the other side here. You got hot tubs off to the side, and then you walk right into the Surfside Cafe, which is the buffet here on the NCL Prima. And it uh, might surprise you guys how uh, not big the buffet is. You know, normally you think of a huge buffet but it's uh it's really it's really just half half the size and so you got drink station usually salad station there and this is it now unfortunately we're past the lunchtime period but this section here the salad section that i showed you back there so that's one two three four of course, a uh, nod to the seating, nice seats, all that stuff. And then five, that's it. That's the end of the, the amount of buffet service stations. And so uh, another, another knock that I've heard on this one, Surfside Bar, real easy place to pop into to get some of the drink. Another knock that I've heard is like the buffet is small, but again, they use the indulge to kind of overcome that. And then in between, lunch and dinner they do have the surfside grill aspect here for their hot dogs and hamburgers french fries a place to uh, a place to pick up stuff grab and go style and then this is the vibe beach club uh, you have to pay extra to go to the vibe beach club so we'll walk up a level i can show you the vibe a little bit So the Vibe Beach Club is, again, you have to you have to pay extra to get in, but it gives you some exclusivity in the same way that, say, the Haven would give you exclusivity. A little less crowded than on the main decks. Got a pretty poppin' bar here, the Prima Speedway bar, and then the entrance to the drop slide. the drop slide there basically they put you on a mat and they drop you down seal you up in a tube so we can, we'll watch the uh, the drop seal you up in a tube and then the game of will you make it or won't won't you make it begins <laughs> there you go. 
Will you make it or won't you make it? Past the drop slide is there. Mini golf and it's nice. Uh, oh, I didn't know you had to pay though. Huh. Well, that makes this uh, less nice. I guess $10 to get a golf ball. Hmm. I don't know. That's uh, most of the time mini golf's included. How's it going? Most of the time the golf's included. And uh, this is a really sweet looking golf course, but it uh, looks like you have to pay. And then at the end, there's some sort of opportunity to win a cruise. So maybe that justifies the, oh wait, wait, I take it back. This says $10, but this says complimentary. Complimentary mini golf. So I take back all of that weird disdain I had. And then they also have a, like an automated dart game, which is really neat. It's a real dart board, right? So it's a cork dart board, but there's sensors behind it and you're able to tap your card and play a, play a game. And everybody that I've talked to that's done this said it's a really good time. So it records your score there on the screen when you throw the darts, which is really neat. So kind of cool. And then they've got several of these. All right. We've stood in the shadow. We've stood in the shadow of the go-karts long enough. Let's climb up to the observation deck and see some of these go-karts in action. In action. Okay, I'm teasing you. Before we do that, let me show you the stadium area. This is cool. They keep records of the times of the drivers so you can essentially compete throughout the week. And then you've got the stadium area. Where they've got foosball and soccer ping pong, pickleball, pickleball, and they've got weird ping pong, weird ping pong and weird ping pong and shuffleboard, shuffleboard. Pretty cool. It's a nice little area. All right, now, now we should go to the observation deck and look at the go-karts. How's it going? If you're going to drive, you go up that way. If you're going to watch, you can go this way. Winter circle over here. There's our friend Cindy shooting the uh, cars as they come by. So you get this laser gun and you're trying to shoot the cars as they come by. Pretty cool. Hmm. I have a gun. Here comes our targets. Locked on target. I don't know if I got any of them. Good luck, Cindy.
this really is a neat feature. I, mean, I know we can have the debate whether having all of this takes up too much space, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. Very cool. Fun. All right, guys, I'm gonna make my way back down and I'll pick you up in just a second. As I turned around, I realized there really is a big winner's circle here to celebrate your victory in, which is very cool. Very nice. Looks fun. Looks fun. All right, let's make our way back through the pool area. See if we can find the stairs to that other slide. See if there's any kind of observation there so we can see that slide. And then we will head back to the cabin. Thank you. Head back to the cabin and play a few more rounds of did they make it? America's newest game show. Did they make it? Right there. So I think we have to climb the deck here to get to the to the slide and the other sun area. Just people everywhere. Like I said, I think the complaint's valid that there's just not enough space for people. Hey, 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 what's up? Not enough space when for people that are uh, trying to lay out by the, by the pool. All right, we'll climb the stairs here. See what's at the top. What's at the top? What's at the top? Wow, it looks like more uh, sunbathing. Sunbathing on this side. And then I got some showers, the wave water slide. Oh, that's mean. Not that, uh... Okay, then we go up to the wave water slide. Maybe a little kitty area. Kid pool. Photo spot. Yeah. Looks like you could observe it. That looks pretty neat. Go up to the wave water slide area. Oh yeah. Got more sun decks up here. Decent sized line for the water slide. Let's see if we can actually kind of see it over there. Let you go there. <laughs> nice. That's a pretty simple slide. Just one turn and you pop up the thing and go from there. The wave water slide. All right. Gonna head back to the cabin now. But you know what we didn't see? Let me stop on 16 and show you the entrance to the spa. So tucked in on deck 16 is the Mandarin Spa and Salon, also the Barber Shop and the Pulse Fitness Center. I just wanted to see if I could see the fitness center. How do you get to the fitness center? All the way to the back. All the way to the back. All right, here we go. Let's go take a look at the Barber Shop. Look at that. That's very nice. Got like a thermal pool in there. Get your nails done. Treatment rooms. And we have the Pulse Fitness Center. The Pulse opens 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. 
and uh, yeah, get your workout on at sea. You've got your dressing rooms, you got a scale, you got treadmills, treadmills, and elliptical, kettlebells, exercise bikes. You got workout machines, towels, you got massage guns. Well, I like the fact that you have massage guns. This is a nice, uh, a nice thing to have, especially if you got a sore back. That's pretty cool. Very nice. So yeah, decent sized gym. Get some water here, sparkling or still water. I think I get some water. Oh, how about that? Just hold it under there. Delicious. And we're back. We are back. 16180. Nice and cool. We gotta do it, right? Before we get out of here, let's go uh Let's go do a few more rounds of did they make it or not. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. Tony for La Lita Loca. Till the next time. See you on the Lido. Bye.